from Psalm 86. Turn your ear, O Lord, and give answer, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am faithful. Save the servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I cry to you all the day long. Give joy to your servants, O Lord, for to you we lift up our souls. And then Proverbs chapter 22. Injure not the poor because they are weak, nor, trust the need, nor crush the needy at the gate of the city. For the Lord will defend their cause and will plunder the lives of those who plunder them. The Lord will free those who have no one to help them. He himself will come to save the poor. Amen. The Bridge 99 FM, a maturing addition to the landscape of Jamaican media. This time doing more than that, reaching out to the diaspora anywhere in the world. Bridging the distance, the physical dif distances, the emotional and spiritual partitions between all of us as native Jamaicans, as adopted Jamaicans, as lovers of this rock. The Bridge 99 FM, 99.13579 on the FM dial and www.thebridge99fm.com, wherever you are in the world. It's a real privilege to share in this endeavor. It's an epic one of great media and social significance, don't you think? So often people have left our shores and we've kind of waved at them at a, at a distance, expected things from them, su suffered from lack of effective communication. Yeah, now it's different. So we're going to do it very, very intently, link you up all over the world. So Today is Wednesday, February the 23rd, and on this day in 1868, I'm told, here's my his, his historian producer, W.E.B. Du Bois was born, a sociologist, historian, Pan-Africanist, author, editor, one of the founders of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored Peoples in America, and leader of what was known as the Niagara Movement. Yes, well... Uh, the boys and Gavi didn't get on, you know. Um, Gavi saw the boys as an accommodationist. Uh, the boys argued that he understood the need for gradualism in the uh, course of Negro emancipation in the United States in the throes of Jim Crow. The argument can continue. The, it's fascinating. But what is never to be doubted is the commitment of those persons, the suffering that they undertook, the sacrifices that they made in order that persons who were disadvantaged, a whole race, could be placed on, a, on, on an equal footing, given the opportunities to flourish. Perhaps the anniversary of Du Bois's birth is, uh, resonates particularly this year round, yesterday, three persons who had hunted down a man for no other reason than he was a black man, yes, a different race, were convicted of a race crime. Hard to, 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 to convict in the United States, but they did it, yes. And it stands as a signal of, in, of improved consciousness in the midst of a situation which is, where the ground isn't level yet at all. Okay, and where there are many in the country who would want to hide away from the realities of the past and the consequences of the past, not recriminatory, but simply justly, in order that you can have every human person made in the image and likeness of God, irrespective of their race, yes, able to transcend the shackles of history and create a new world, have a new beginning, that we can all flourish together, yes. That's the, the stated aim of the Jamaica national purpose. It always has been. And we need to make sure that we never allow dust to gather on that, but rather to keep it burnished and, and untarnished and 
full of verve and enthusiasm always, eh? So we make that point about black history, that event celebrated, remembered today in the midst of Black History Month. Remember, you can join us on the Early Rise and indeed on all the bridge programs. The WhatsApp and text line is 876-551-5782. And the studio line is 876-676-4996. Nowadays, the telecommunications is so easy and so cheap. There's no excuse. We'd love to hear from you. Grateful for those who wake up early in the morning and share with us. Uh, We get many comments. Why on earth are you doing this thing so early? You'll get much more uh, interaction if you were to broadcast later in the day. That's true. And we leave it to those who uh, create the schedules and adjust them for the bridge. But the important thing is that we're trying to reach people in different time zones. eh? And that's the initial rationale for the early rise. Uh, the CNN tracker said that over, was, what was it, only 70% of America uh, this, this is likely to have freezing weather this week. Okay, we uh, wish to tell you that the Meteorological Service of Jamaica uh, forecasts that today, Wednesday, the morning we can expect isolated showers across northeastern parishes. Meanwhile, this afternoon, we can expect isolated showers across sections of southern parishes. Windy conditions are expected, especially across southern parishes. And I'd like to tell you that in the parish of St. Andrew in Jamaica this morning, coming down from the Blue Mountains, a light, gentle rain, yes, farmer's rain, just making sure that the, the, the plants and the crops have moisture, to blend with the healing growth factors of the sun later on today. We are blessed that we have an equitable tropical climate. We need to make the most of it, not just for the tourists, but for our own selves and to be as much productive as we can in those circumstances. eh? I remember once attending a national conference, you know, folk, um, in Europe, and uh, some of us in the Caribbean were bemoaning that we weren't getting preferential prices for our crops uh, any longer. And uh, there was a silence in this international conference. And then one man from Finland got up and he said, you know, we are uh, largely food sufficient and we export a lot of, of agriculture products, but we have only 60 days a year out of 365 where we can plant anything because of the temperate climate, in fact, the frigid climate of Finland, which, remember, is in northern Europe, and there was silence. And then a man from Israel got up, and he pointed to us from the Caribbean, and he said, you fools, he used a strong word. He said, we live in a desert, we have no water at all, and we feed the whole of southern Europe. So what are you complaining about? They both were right, you know, and unfortunately our history and some uh, inexcusable, or let me not use be inexcusable, that sounds uh, too harsh, some bad policies over time have made us more complainers about effective agricultural production and uh, making the best use of our tropical climate than uh, we we ought. And that challenge has existed for a long time. Now it's even more acute. I remember, again, what we began to discuss yesterday. The Bank of Jamaica, who are the economic forecasters as well as other regulatory functions, are telling us that times are going to get harder in Jamaica, okay? Yesterday, the uh, announcement was that the national minimum wage, which we've complained about so often on this program, yeah, which has been $7,000, less than 50 US dollars a week, a week, you know, has been raised to $9,000. That's what, $57. Well, okay, We, we must never fail to be grateful for small blessings. But this one, well, small, you know. Okay, 
let, let me let me point it out to you. Okay, when the the, the national minimum wage of seven thousand was 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 announced in what was it twenty sixteen, the 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 conversion rate f- for the Uni- United States dollar, the constant dollar, was one twenty two to one, and so the seven thousand converted at that time to fifty seven dollars and nine cents US. 57.9. Follow me, Richie? Okay. Now, when we get $9,000 as the as minimum wage, the rate for the dollar is 156. In fact, some would say it's 158. It goes up and down, huh? But take the lower rate, 156. That means that the $9,000, okay, now adds up to $57.42. Before, the $7,000 was $57.09. At the present rate, it's fifty-seven dollars and forty-two cents. That means that, in real terms, yes, comparing it to the to the constant dollar, the U.S. dollar, our minimum wage has increased by thirty-three U.S. cents. Oh God, how that go? We can do better than that, or, or that's the best we can do for our people, the low-wage people. And remember that some 60% of wage earners in this country, Dr. Peter Phillips told us this long ago, some 60% of the wage earners in this country earn minimum wage or slightly above. Okay? So when I read in the papers this morning um, the various reactions and I am I am struck by the, the 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 question as to whether they have done the kind of conversion that that I have, which is which is a real one. Okay, so it's not that we we are, we are wild and radical, but in constant dollar terms between twenty sixteen and twenty twenty two, is thirty two cents we get more, in real terms. Mm-mm. And then, of course, the price of everything gone up so much in the meanwhile. I feel, and I urge Bridge, Bridge Nation listeners to resonate with me, that without any blame of anybody, but with, with a clear understanding of what the realities of our system is, is, we can do much better than that. All right, And it's not to have red eye for anybody else, but there are some in this country who are who are who are taking advantage of the majority, you know? And uh, we shouldn't let that happen, okay? Um, I'm seeing where on the, uh, again, on the American media, the women footballers are going to get equal pay as the men foot, male footballers, uh, and that's a sign of, of gender equality. And as it turns out, the, the women footballers are doing better than the men sometimes. So question now. In Jamaica, the reggae girls going to get the same pay as the reggae boys. <laughs> but don't the reggae boys are win more matches than, than the reggae boys? Don't? <laughs> yes. So how that going to? All right. And shouldn't they? Or is football really? I mean, we make certain concessions, you know, Ronnie, but um, football is a, male, a man's game. And the women's uh, league will never get as much audience response, never earn as much money as the guys. I don't think so, you know. I think things are changing, don't you? Yeah. And I think that if you are offering equal performance, then you must you should get equal pay. Isn't that the principle? Remember on this program, you know, our, our discourse on political economy, on social issues is always guided by principle. Yes? And so we're willing always to discuss principles with you. Not so much we, we don't want to discuss personalities. We want to discuss principles. That's the difference in this kind of program with these kind of people who are your hosts. So the principle is equal pay for equal work. Right? So if you're representing the national flag and you happen to be a female, and you actually are doing quite well and putting all of your effort into it. Why must get less pay because you're a woman? I don't think so. So I'm looking to see the reaction now that takes place in our troubled football uh, uh, fraternity or or community, better, fraternity is man business. 
So we'll, we'll use a gender neutral word or community. All right? So that's a thought. But really and truly, um, <laughs> the, 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 the issue of principle that I want to raise this morning for discussion is can we do better for ourselves, for people at the lowest rung of society, than to give them a constant dollar increase over six years of 32, 33 U.S. cents? Okay? And what is this doing to the, to the nutritional health? What is this doing to the sense of, to the relationships? A, w when a man go out and work, and, or a woman, and come home to their family, and them can't bring necessities of life, it causes all kinds of friction, you know. It is at the root of all kinds of disturbance of fractured relationships, and very often it spills over into violent crime. Can we accept that? Can we do better? And if we can't do better right now, can we show a path where we are going to do better so that people in the midst of tightening their belts, which we seem to be have, have to do it, uh, forever if we follow this path, okay? There's always going to be a situation where we're telling a whole heap of people, the majority of our people, hold on, hold on, wait till the barrel come, or wait till I win the election and um, better must come. Yes, and, and all of these are nice, you know, and good en encouragements, but are they realistic? And less, since less and less people are accepting that they're realistic, then what you do is say, well, no, not for you, but for me or for my supporters. Eh? Is that is? That, that's, that's what we end up doing. Can I explain to you, Bridge Nation, some of the mental gymnastics that our self-imposed low horizons of progress impress upon us? And how cruel it is. It's unnecessary, you know. We could do much better. Yeah. When has the, the nation, even now, at the time when we are at least m mouthing the words about living wage, I want to talk with Vin Morrison, you know. He has a concept of it. One of the few trade unions, trade unionists. Yeah. Um, w w when we're talking about that, what does that really mean? Should you be able to earn a, a, a living wage from giving the totality of your work effort for a week or for a month or for a year? And if not, what are the consequences? What are the backups? What do you expect? All right? These are some of the issues that we have to, to, to consider. These are some of the thoughts that we, we, we commend to our friends in the diaspora because they support so many of our families. And that's great. Really glad of that. But at the same time, we have to ask ourselves the question, how long are we going to be dependent on them? What we need to do is to be able to find a way forward for the majority, indeed the totality of our people, that really is going to allow them to have, to earn, not to get, you know, not to become dependent and entitled on anybody else, whether it is the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. I heard Mr. Samuda speaking on television last night, or on the arrival of the Western Union or the monogram or the barrel. Yeah? But rather, by our own initiative to earn enough that we can live, not lavishly, that will only be for a few and some if they choose that, and that's a path of destruction. You know that in your heart of hearts. But at least to have sufficient so that we can have a decent life, so that we can, we, we can hold up our standards. We can pay the light bill rather than throw up the wire or, or bridge the pipe. That we can send a pit to go to school, yes, and give him something in pocket rather than the, 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 the cheese tricks money. Where we can say to the young girl growing up, look here, here is the items of clothes and here is the, 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 the modest, uh, presentable, a uh, way that, that we don't need to buy the, the, the donkey here. Yeah, let her know that. Um, but, but so that you can, you can put forward yourself and be proud of how you look. These are the things that we need for all of our people. And when we don't have them, we have a disordered society and all of the carbuncles and, and, and boils of, of corruption intervene. And people start to say things, do things, live a way that don't make a difference. I met a guy the other day, just before we take the break, you know. Um, he, he has a lovely girlfriend. Yes, what a sweet girl. 
So he 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 take up with her now, and I mean they they are in their early twenties, and they even start to breathe the word marriage. Can you believe? But then he lost his job in the COVID thing, and he has nothing to bring home. Nothing to bring home. So guess what happened now? He's frustrated. She's angry. Okay? So they have a falling out. And so what he does, he said, boy, you know, I'm going to find a, 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 a relationship with the next girl because she have a work. And so she can support me while I am. So guess what now? The loving and the beginnings, the possibilities of an ordered family which the two original ones were really, really committed to from school days. I know them well, you know. Yeah, they all come church. That broke up now. Yeah, why? Broke up because, <laughs> because first of all, the educational opportunities were, were there, but they weren't uh, taken up in the way that they should have been. And secondly, that the, the job opportunities simply weren't there, aggravated and overtaken by the reality of COVID. But then, you see, before he left the original relationship, a little baby was on the way. Yeah? So what's going to happen to that child now? Yeah? Because the trust has been broken. Because the, the basic material, uh, material trappings needed for a, a healthy relationship were not possible, were not there. That's a tragedy, you know, and it's a bigger tragedy in the making. And it is unnecessary. It is unnecessary. If we would simply follow the golden rule of doing to others what we would want them to do to us, it needn't be that way in Jamaica. There's more when we return on the early rise. This is Bridge 99 FM. Boy, you should see the antics in the studio this morning as we welcome the Honorable Colonel Charles. Good morning, sir. Morning, sir. <laughs> morning. I Happy see to you. have. I see you are not only sounding bright, yes. you are looking bright. Thank you very much. I return the compliment to you. Yes. My, my, my spirit, a little trouble, though. Help me with this one. Um, th th this, this, this terrible war that seems to be brewing in Europe, in Ukraine, Europe yes. and the edge of Asia. And here you have in the nation that we respect so much and follow so much and so many people listening to us from there, the United States, you have Mr. Trump celebrating what Mr. Putin is doing, yes. saying he's a, he's, he's a genius. Well, oh, how'd that go, Pernell? Well, let me tell you the truth. Uh -huh. I feel that the presence of Mr. Trump, uh -huh. not only in America, right. but in that period that he served, and even a lot of the after period yeah. is a big problem. <laughs> and somebody has said it probably not him, it's his brain. I'm not I am not a doctor. Mm -hmm. But all I know he has caused us some very serious problems. Why? Well, what, what 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 does he stand for that we we think is so reprehensible? I don't know. I I, I am have you read the, the book written by his niece? Yes, I know of it. I haven't read it fully, no, yes. but I know the contents. Yes. Um, he seemed to have been a troubled child. Troubled. Troubled child. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, or somebody who have troubled long ago. Uh -huh. And always so had pleasure to be on the opposite so side. So him head take him, him, head take him, as we would say. Yes. Yeah. But, but he, he seemed to be insatiably greedy for money and for power. Well, he has both. Well, yes. He has money. Yeah, well, so, yes. In both. And if he has money, that's, uh -huh. that's powerful. I believe he may have some of Mr. Putin money. And, and that, um, is, that is one of his problems. Always has been during his term in office. He was soft on Putin because there was a strong... Feeling in, that he feeling has investment he, he in had, Russia. Yeah, yes. He had loans in, in Russia, yeah. from Russia. Yes. And therefore, he had to behave himself a certain way. But how, when, when, when a man like the... the Putin, whatever the, 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 the history, when he moves troops and hot up an area like Ukraine and, and the re puts the rest of the world in a tailspin, including, 
including Mr. Charles, as you and I know, yeah. the gas price in Jamaica. Uh-huh. Yes? The world. The world. And I said this to you the other morning, you know, that here was one man representing mm-hmm. others yeah. who have the rest of us mm-hmm. in a hot seat. Hostage. Have us on the edge. Yes. And it has proven. Okay. And, and, and the truth is, it indicates to me, as a political science student, that he's going to go further. And 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 even though the United States and some of our, and I'm not quite certain that some of the allies are not a little soft too. Well, so far not. But uh, you but they've indicated that they are coming along. Right, and, and but, there, there's but, a lot at stake for them, you know. Huh? There is a lot at stake for them. For them, more than Biden. M- yes. And and he was he, he was the one speaking out. Yes. So, but so, somebody said to me, you know. Uh, when there's a war, presidents win. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> is that so? Boy, because w- w- what, what I'm seeing now, well, I'm distressed that Trump is one, one, one personality and he, he looms large. But there are large b- b- numbers of Americans who, who buy into that argument. Well, that is what is bothering me. That what happened to indi- their soul? I- indication is that 48% of the, the Americans oh. supporting him at this time, so, so, whatever he's saying and whatever he's doing. So what happens is that democracy, yes, which is supposed to be represented by the political system and the political actors in the United States, uh, is, so turns in on itself that it becomes ineffective as an antidote to autocracy, to fascism in the in other parts of the world. And a short question is that democracy is in danger. So the, the democracy that we know of, yeah, practice yeah. and would like to see yeah. is in danger. So Mr. Charles, hold on also. Help me. Whoa. Because this is this is going deep. Because if 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 there is this tendency in what we call a democratic system to turn in on each other. Yes. In the na- in, and, and, and bless it in the name of freedom of choice. Yes. And freedom of expression. Freedom of expression. Yes. Okay. But we use it not in order to liberate ourselves, no. but in order to confound ourselves. And then you have the Putins and the Xi Jinpings and the Idi Amins of this world saying, Ha, look for them people. Them can't even decide what them defend, what them going to do. That's not what they're saying. What I'm saying. They're saying they are right. Yeah. They're saying I told you that they were wrong. Yes, sir. They now find out they're wrong. They're yes. turning themselves. They're yes. coming to us. Yeah. So, 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 so. B- so they are going to win. Right. Biden, no. Yes. Biden can't get through one piece of legislation no. in, in, in America. Because Congress. some of the Trumpites will not support <laughs> it. Quite so. And then, uh, and because, because some of the, some, some of the, 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 the counter values that are being put forward are dividing them yes so so much yes you have this this so-called progressive wing in the democratic party yes which seems to be a a, a, a position without standards they they, they 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 are at odds on personal behavior on all kinds of of different things what they stand for i don't understand except some amorphous irresponsible notion of human freedom, which is in fact a bastardization of that value. And oh, when, when you look at that and, and how they have constipated themselves, use the word purposes, sir, and become, be, become unable to respond and to, to, to recommend their system, yes, by their, by their example, not by their, their precept, to the rest of the world, that I want to make sure that we in Jamaica don't follow that rake, yeah, look, sir. Look, Granny. The democracy that the United States represented, right, yeah. and I'm saying represented Did. because we're having yeah, a problem past. with it. Yeah. Many of us found great freedom in that Indeed. and have decided to go that line. Yeah. Now, with what is going on in Congress yeah. and what is going on in their polling yeah. around Trump, right. where are we? It's not going to be long before the, the, the fringes... Uh-huh. In the democratic society, as right. we saw it, as in in in, in, in Canada, uh-huh. it's a hell of a thing happening in Canada, you know. Uh, indeed, uh, and 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 look how long it stayed. Yeah, and look who supported them. Oh, you understand me? And right, Trump, so. <laughs> Trump, Trump, Trump is marginalizing himself, or putting himself in a position that he's defending that fringe of the world. What's it? Hear me ask. And he, he said something about Britain too, you know. Oh. 
about about yes. Johnson. Yes. And so well, hold on he, he seemed to be to be making his own Trump world. Yeah. And and being allowed to do it. But let me ask you this. Yes? Um didn't the, didn't the Jamaica Labour Party have connections with the and fraternity with the Republican Party of the United States? I heard so, but I've been there for fifty one years and I've never <laughs> seen any Okay. Any, any, any of that. Okay, I'm glad that, to hear that. And I've never seen the Americans doing anything for the Labour Party that they didn't do for the JNP, for the PNP government. Oh, uh -huh. uh, in in right. other words, uh, in fact, I recall there was a time when somebody from the JNP would even go to the <coughs> Democratic Convention. The Democratic Convention. Yes, I did not know that. Yes, uh -huh. and I. Uh, <laughs> I thought they, I thought the alignment was with the Republicans, and if, and if so. No, no, no. Sorry. The Republican, yes, yes, not the Democrat, right. the Republican, uh -huh. and and uh, I would have thought that it would be time, if if it's if the if the bond still exists, even with our small voice, but a very strong voice. To say, no, I don't. No. I, I, Rani, I must confess, uh -huh. I've never heard it discussed. Right. I've never seen any such thing. Okay, you would it. know, and I and and uh, <coughs> uh, it was not a part of right. me. Good, well, right. that, and you are rock stone. Um, what we need to do is to make sure that we take sleep mark death. And we have to refine our system in a way that we avoid the weaknesses on the one hand and the excesses on the other. <clears throat> but couldn't the same thing be said about the PNP? I don't think that they have ever been so connected to the Democratic the, Party. The, the Democratic Party. I don't know. Uh, that's yeah, what I'm saying. I mean, ad ideologically, in, in, in a very broad and vague sense, the yeah. answer would be yes, they'd be more connected with the Democratic Party than One they would with the One time the discussion took place in my presence, uh -huh. and we discovered that we were more connected to the Democratic <laughs> Party. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> ideologically. Well, that would, be, that, would, that, that would be interesting. But hear me now. One of the things that I still have in my craw, you know, is during Mr. Trump's time, Remember when Prime Minister Holness and Prime Minister, what, who were missing, I think, of the Bahamas and Haiti, went to the White House or yes. went, went to, to Florida on yes. Mr. Trump's invitation. Yes. And they put them to sit down beside the kitchen door. What a terrible thing, sir. And even, and, and even then, no, we have, to, we, we, we have to be clear about ourselves, you know, not recriminatory. There is a, there is a, a recent piece, piece of legislation in Congress now Sponsored, interestingly, by two senators. Yes. Senator Rubio, yes, from Florida, very conservative Republican, and Senator Menendez, a Democrat from New Jersey. And it, it's about Caribbean issues. Yes. Yes. And their concern, the texture of the bill, is entirely to do with secure their, their concerns about the security of the Caribbean nations in relation to the United States. Nothing to do with our development at all. And I will go as far as go, go, go to this, the simplest of them. Because I remember that was discussed, that Garvey yeah. couldn't find any sympathy. No. Or we couldn't find any sympathy. Yeah. In, in, in that party where they were yeah. president and leader of the Senate yeah. to um, look at the situation with Garvey. So, uh, but, but, Randy, we must remember, we must not allow this thing to catch us, you know. Uh -huh. Remember when Michael Manley yeah. flew to the Far East with yeah. Fidel Castro. Yeah. And we gave him hell, right? Yeah. And Michael's answer was, why don't you say, I flew with Fidel and I chained Fidel rather than Fidel, Fidel changed, changed me? <laughs> Michael, <laughs> Tip and typical because of love, but yes. we, we bring it to Michael and you had a lot in common, you know. Uh, I'm not sure, <laughs> except except we were three. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, Much you, more you, than you, that. You, you read my email, you know. <laughs> I did. Did I? You read I, my email. I read your book. <laughs> no, here, what? Yeah, yeah, remember this letter I sent you with yeah. the, um, the, um, old man that that died from Far East. Yes. Yeah. The letter from 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 the grave. Yes, well, Lee Kuan Yew. Lee Kuan Yew. Uh -huh. I sent it to a friend of mine uh -huh. in America, mm -hmm. and he sent back to say, "It's so nice if you and Michael would do well together." <laughs> 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 well, no, we 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 are doing more than just make joke. There's there's a chord, no, a, look, a, a texture of seriousness in this. Don't make it this. a joke. Don't mm -hmm. make it a joke. And I told you this before. Mm -hmm. I was very attracted. Mm -hmm to the presentation of Michael Manley yeah. on behalf of my people, yeah. my class, yeah. 
They suffer father. in class. Yes. Well, you know. Uh-huh. You Important. Know? We, he was on my street. Yeah. As I would say to you sometimes, when you say what, what I would like to say, that you have just read what we wrote. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, and then somebody said, well, what about Siago? He mm-hmm. could have been uptown. Mm-hmm. He could have got any seat uptown. Mm-hmm. And he left and went downtown, mm-hmm. where there probably was not one white man. Mm-hmm. Right? And I said, well, Michael mm-hmm. was talking it, and Siago was acting it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... <laughs> Well, and you know, you know my question. Uh, uh, we're, we're in a small nation, in a, in a nation with all ca- kinds of difficulties, living, uh, as I often put it, in the slipstream of the developed world, okay? Yes. Um, w- w- if one was talking it to, to advantage and one was doing it to advantage, why the hell did we have to go the, 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 the way of separating and fighting each other? And isn't that exactly... If we have a system of which we call democratic, which has very significant democratic elements in it, look at how you and I are engaging in that right now. Yeah. Very democratic exercise we do here. Yes, we have why, to find another word for it. Uh-huh. Why, <laughs> why do we? Why do we have to have this chronic division, which in fact holds us back and turns off the majority of our people? And f- places us in a situation, Mr. Charles, where where you don't you, you you don't like it, and I abhor it. Where, for example, in real constant dollar terms, yes, what must have been a very carefully thought out increase in the minimum wage from seven thousand to nine hundred nine thousand dollars a week, is in fact, if you look at the, the at the conversion, yes, is is an increase of thirty three U.S. cents. Yeah, but holy word, right? Oh, the hell, man. Holy word, holy word. Yeah. It has always been there. <clears throat> we have survived. Now, listen, look, I have, some, I have something to show you. Okay. Most of us, including myself sometimes, yeah. until it was shown in my lap, most of us are <clears throat> looking at the meager, and I call it meager, mean very small. Call it moga. <laughs> moga. <laughs> increase in the... Minimum wage. Right. Until I had the authority uh-huh. or the opportunity of leading it, right. I was never told to look at who am I asking to pay. Understood, sir. And you've told us so many times. Remind and and us. It, it bothers me uh-huh. that the people, the, that the majority of who are asked to pay, yeah. Are if, themselves if, earning something? Are but, they themselves minimum wages yeah, so, earners? So, so, but then what, the, the, what? Instead of that, putting a full stop to the argument, I want to press you with your experience and given your principles. Yes, I want to say to us that we must devise a way in which that can be altered, so that you don't put people in the hopeless dilemma of themselves earning ten, fifteen thousand dollars a week and expect to pay I, somebody seven, more whole, than seven thousand. Could I ask you hold the sentence? Don't finish it. Okay. That is why I mourn with you uh-huh. that the trade union uh-huh. that negotiate yeah. wages and terms of condition of employment for the majority of people yeah. does not seem to be exercising that at this stage. Because Minimum wage earners <coughs> were never meant to be bulk of workers who could be organized and their wages be negotiated by mm-hmm. a union. Mm-hmm. So, Follow me? So, so what do so, we do? This well, what I would like to, do, to see, and I'm really respect, very respectfully, by the way, yeah. yes, and reverently, yeah. trying to let us pr- frame a budget debate. Yes. Yes. If, if in fact, as you just said, Mr. Charles, so correctly, it was never intended for the bulk of our workers to be at the base of the society. Never. Remember, that was what they were in slavery, you know. <laughs> and that was what they clawed out a different existence, but still very much at the bottom, most of them, yeah. after slavery. And so 60 years of in, after, in, of, after independence, they are still there, yes? No, I would like the budget debate to say, you know what? We're tired of this. We can't manage this anymore. It is a, it is a, it, it's, it's wrong for our people. Look at what is happening to them in terms of their social behavior, crime, uh, 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 broken families, it's all, all the things we know. Yes, And therefore, during this year coming, we're going to put our efforts, moral efforts and financial efforts, towards making sure that everyone who wants to advance their education 
is has the opportunity to do so. Uh, don't 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 finish the sentence. <laughs> you okay. Yes, that's 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 nice to say. No, I have full it's, it's important to do. I've we, been saying it all the while. Yeah, but we tried and, to until somebody said, "No, you're there. Do it." Yeah. But we tried to do it. You know, we, I mean that that was the spirit behind the Jamal of 1973. 74 that I was a part of yes yes and it was going well and then what we did was defeat the very thing ourselves because we started to some people started to say look here I me to come first because PNP just win mm. yes and Herb Rose who I don't think is alive anymore and Dr. Mavis Gilmore mm. who is thank God yes all uh, d d my uh, b brother Dr. Franklin Johnson all of us Lassell Beckford Mrs. Curlew myself Danny Williams, Joyce Robinson, all of us were involved. Yes. Yes. And w w w what 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 was a, m a growing, healthy plant of national consciousness towards uplifting the professional qualifications, the basic foundations of advancement in life, was allowed to be overturned by competition, because the competing forces find themselves being dumped in a, <coughs> what they call non-competitive force. And it gets back to me, as I said to you earlier, uh -huh. I wanted to raise uh -huh. the minimum wage to what you call a living standard uh -huh. and find out that a lot of those who, were pay, who are paying minimum yeah. wage themselves have said, if they pay minimum wage, they don't have minimum wage to go home. Okay. So I agree so, with you. So therefore... Well, so hold on. So I went to the government. I said, hold on. This can't work. Yeah. What they say, all right. Good, good to hear your let's, story. Let's, let's go to Social Security. Uh -huh. Let's go to uh -huh. increasing path. Mm -hmm. Mostly for those who are unable to take care of their children, mm -hmm. unable to take care of themselves. Yeah, but I don't agree with that, you know. Well, you may not agree because, well, I don't want to say you are not, you are not totally affected. But for me... No, it was, that's a short-term thing. But charity, no, which is what no, Parsh no, no, is. No, 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 hold on. There are other programs uh -huh. following the same path. Uh -huh. and it's, and it's, uh, Little bit. Uh, that that <coughs> treats people who <coughs> don't have anything, don't work. Little bit. It run a little bit, but it's a lot. No. <laughs> yeah, no. Who am I to say it? no? Um, of course, it helps. It helps. Oh, okay. But that is not in uh -uh. our... Yeah, but what I'm saying now, uh, is, uh, uh, let's deal with the fundamental improvements that are needed. People need, we, we, in order to have better jobs, in order to be more independent of path and poverty and all those things, they need better education. Come, let us deal with the fundamentals. You can't have jobs if you don't use the land. You can't have jobs if we are, if, if we are competing against them on the basis of who is P and who is J. Can't do that. <clears throat> there are some fundamental things that I think in this God bless sixtieth year of independence we need to say uh, that we're talking about and uh, that we're going to spend the money on. Instead of which we have a budget which is so prosaic. It is exactly what it has been <laughs> when when you and I were in Parliament. What it was before. Little bit of change, yes, which we will all <clears throat> point to and say, see what we're doing. Clap, 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 clap. And when you look at it, either it can't work. Or it don't spend, okay, or the final outcome is not what we expect it to be. We All can right. do better than uh, that, you uh, know. But let's, let us, let us look at what you just said. Yeah. What makes up the budget? Uh, Where the money come from? Taxpayer. Hold on. The money comes from taxpayer. <coughs> and that money pays who? P pays the bulk of it pays who? Pays public service. Public service. Yeah. Police, doctors, yeah. nurses, uh -huh. civil servants. That, that itself hold on, hold on. to look at. And they mm -hmm. got 4% increase. Mm -hmm. with, <laughs> with inflation, 10. Which in itself uh -huh. is rubbish. Not rubbish, if, but, but no, no, in, inadequate. That they say is uh -huh. rubbish. Yes. Because it does not improve our standard to be any better than we were two or three years ago. In fact, it puts but us behind where we were. Money, finally saying, it is good to look at what we should be doing. Yes. But you have to look at what we need to do from what we have okay, so and what we are getting. And that is what we're going to discuss when we return to the early rise on the bridge <laughs> at 99 FM. This is a program which is, has no parallel. We'll return shortly. 
later on in the program, Dr. Ransford Davidson, who is the business relationship and sales manager at JN Bank in Jamaica, joins us to talk about leadership strategies to reduce employees' occupational stress. That's his doctoral uh, thesis subject, and that's a subject which is going to, I know, interest my co-host, Bernal Charles, the veteran trade unionist. So that's coming up. For the moment, though, in Jamaica, yesterday, Mr. Charles, uh, Prime Minister Holness, announced a relaxation of some of the strictures that we have had to endure because of, of COVID. I think, am I right in saying we all feel relieved that this is possible? Um, is it, is, can we go back to life as we normally did, used, used to have it now, or is there still room for caution? What do you feel personally? Well, you have answered the question. Uh -huh. There's still room for caution yeah. because um, there are certain things that we <coughs> have to do to provide a, um, if we use a word, a revamping of yes. the, uh, the situation. Uh -huh. um, you have to still wash your hands, keep your distance, and wear your mask because of every hundred people who die, 93 yeah. of them yeah. have taking their vaccination. Have not uh, taken. Have, no, have not taken yes, vaccination. Yes. So we still have to be cautious. Right. And then we still have to do dive and hope that we can come up. <laughs> because we haven't gone over the situation yet. No. They have tried it in other countries yes. and it has <clears throat> come back on them in such a way that they, we've tried this before, you know, Randy. Remember, you know? Yes, we have. Which we tried to do that and we put it out in the music industry and everybody go, hug up and kiss up and drink up and then get sick up yeah. and full up the hospital, <laughs> you know, full up the hospital. <laughs> drink up and sick up, yeah. he's drunk, kiss and, up. And, it's and, quite and, true. And, and full, up, full up the hospital. <laughs> Nobody can mess this man's lyrics, you know. <laughs> well, listen, you know. Full up the hospital <laughs> yeah. and full up the morgue. I, but interestingly, contrasting now, obviously situations differ, but I noticed where Zimbabwe yes. in Africa yes. has now stated quite clearly that if you are in the public sector, and you are not vaccinated, don't come to work, and no pay. Yeah, but it's the, it's the reason why we <laughs> haven't said that in Jamaica is fear, political fear. Because if you say that there are 50 of us working in this office, mm -hmm. and the government say the top scientists of the world, mm -hmm. the top medical professionals of <clears> the <throat> world, the top journalists and pastors like you hmm. in the world say, look, this thing is dangerous for all of us. If you catch it, you will die. And if you don't, and if you catch <clears throat> it and don't die, you're likely to pass it to somebody who died. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we are suggesting to you, we are even saying to you, you <laughs> have elected us to govern you. Mm -hmm. We are saying to you, take the vaccine. What you're saying we are fearful to do that. Are full to do that. Yes, okay. because why? Uh -huh. You and others are going to say, don't vote for them. <clears throat> okay. Because guess what? Them force if you could get joke. <coughs> and some of the men who say they must take joke are bar supporters. Yep. They have not been to any school. Uh -huh. They don't know anything about science. Uh -huh. They don't know anything about medicine. Well, I want they don't to know say it. Not even Bush doctor they are. Okay, sir. And they are making people talk, say, if they take this thing, <laughs> it's 66 and steal not them body. Not, not and even Bush doctor. Rubbish. <laughs> but I want to say, First of all, just, just, to just to clear, personally, I would not be against that. I feel that, this, that that is a moral responsibility to become to as protected as you possibly can. So stop I right there. To, oh, you finish this. <clears throat> so when I said to the employer uh -huh. who have 300, 100 workers, yeah. I said 60 of those workers have taken the vaccination. Right. 40 said that them dreams said enough to take it. Uh -huh. And the 60 say, Mr. Tweet, if those 40 don't take it, we can't work with them. Well, indeed, I'm asking. And what are you going to say? Well, I'm going to insist that this is my standard, and this is this, the, the standard that is encouraged by science and is approved by the authorities, in this case the government. And apart from any uh, political fallout or any, anything else, this is what we have to do. Why? Not because we are supporters of this side or that side. What is your profession? Uh -huh. My profession, yeah. I have many. Yeah. But yes, uh, but you're an attorney at law. Yes, I am. So when mm. Mr. Brown comes to Mr. Tweet, uh -huh. my constitutional right uh -huh. 
has been... Yeah, I'd have to tell him, no, I'm very sorry. I don't think you have a case. And you, you wouldn't go to court for him? No, not on that score, because I believe... But you say, I why believe, don't... I, I believe there's a clear and present danger, which, uh, which in, the, in the circumstances of the pandemic justifies the passing of laws, uh, regulations, disaster management uh, act, etc., regulations, that, that, that measure up to the standard required for demeaning, for, for, for postponing my personal right to say I'm not taking this thing. I'm, I'm going to knock you with this one as man just call me and ask, <laughs> ask I know uh, where you're coming. Ask Mr. Tweet yes. if the man, what they go with the woman I don't know, clear enough. <laughs> no, different. You know why? Hold on. Because Hold on, let me answer mm-hmm. the question. Okay. They go with her to I yeah. shoot her, yeah. throw in her bush, oh God. take away the van, yeah. take out her things at her yeah. house. And he comes here and says, Mr. Tweet, uh-huh. well, I mean, I know me do, I mean, do it, you know, but mm-hmm. why you defend me? Mm-hmm. You're not defending? No, if, I, if, he, if, he, if he says what you just said, yeah. that I did it, yes, yeah. my obligation is to say to him that you, I, I will follow you to court and I will make a plea if there is grounds to do so for whatever mitigation is possible, but... I cannot say, I cannot put forward a defense for you that you didn't do it because you have acknowledged that you did do it. Oh, and so if, if somebody <coughs> saw him do it and tell you, well, you would not defend any of these guys in the gang thing? No, no, of course I defend them. Well, on what grounds? On the grounds that they, they, there, is, there is an allegation that is made, and if they deny it, the, the, consti- oh, if they deny the it. constitution is, yes, that they must be proven guilty. Oh, not declared guilty beforehand, which is what we used to do on the basis of color and class, and what we now do on the basis of our of other ascript, those and other ascriptive factors. Well, let me take you back to the first question that you answered. Take me now. These men, you hear them on, f- on telephone mm-hmm. saying, "Chop up them and this and cut mm-hmm. up and this and that," and what are the charges? They are in a gang. Mm-hmm. And you're going to defend them saying what? No. I'm, I'm, look here, sir. This is a very clear principle of law, you know. Yes. It's about 13 centuries old. Yes, at say least. No, say no. Yeah, and that you are innocent until proven guilty. Oh, so let's get back you, to the... You f- want to, uh, hello, sir. Yeah. Any way that you, that, 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 that you undermine that, you put yourself in the situation, in the circumstances in which one Pernell Charles was detained for over a year... So because and he was he was considered by many of our, us as guilty, but he was not proven guilty. Wrong, wrong. We must not do to others what we did to you. But there was no effort made to try to prove me guilty or guiltless. And therefore, because we are. There, ma- was, there was not a statement taken. Okay, sir. I was not taken to. But you court. are making uh, my point. Yes. And therefore, in this case, no. In in, in what well, we are doing with the gangs, no. With, yeah. with the one down trial, yeah. yes. What we're doing is submitting the evidence, okay. to, including the phone calls, yes. to a court of law. Yes. Because that is the way we do it. That is the way that we, 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 we vindicate the principle of justice for the society and also, and also offer every individual the chance, the opportunity to prove themselves innocent. So if any of them say that yes, I'm, I'm, I was part of the gang, they would you wouldn't defend that. I would defend them on uh, uh, putting in a guilty plea. Or you'll put in. They say they have. I would say I can assist you by formulating a guilty plea for you. Under Jamaican law, right now we have uh, we have plea bargaining, okay. and if you admit what you what, what if you've told me that you admit this, I will go to the prosecution and say come. For the per- f- since you have f- since a guilty plea since guilt is admitted, let us work out s- some issue to do with sentencing. So that is what our law provides. The attorneys don't have a a, a, a forum on which you speak. No, the, 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 what I'm saying to you is 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 the the the, 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 the foundation of every attorney's training. <laughs> Some of the four days and then broke down like when Stan licked down some old house. Yeah, this man now. <laughs> <laughs> no, only, but, 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 but you agree with me, Randy, that <clears throat> some of the guys who are defending these murderers, uh-huh. 
terrorists, uh-huh. big old people lie and chop off their neck and uh-huh. shoot them. No, they, no, you have you 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 count if you're. In I terror- never heard one of them go to court and say, "But well, you just said a while ago." Well, I I, I think I have, uh, and but you have. They a, said quietly you, in the back room. No, you have a duty to put forward your client's case. What well, yes? I say? I, they <clears> did it, but they uh, said they were hungry. They no, no, no. You, oh, they, those may be mitigating circumstances. Now, the the example you give is 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 clearly not plausible. But there are many instances where people do things, yes. and where there are justifiable, law law affirmed excuses for what they do. <coughs> yes. Mm-hmm. So that's 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 there. But um, self defense, provocation, all of those are defenses of a, okay. for, for a particular action. But if you <coughs> if you Fabricate evidence. To to uh, fabricate meaning is false and put it forward. Then you are you are in breach of the very oath that you take as a lawyer. I say you're not all. You can't mm-hmm. go over the case. I say my mind tell me say are you. No sir. I. Or, beca- me, or, me, or, or, me here, say or, guilt, or guilt by association. Oh. Somebody say are you. Yes. Yes. And you say no. It's not me. Yes. You All right. Can, no, no. Very important. Sir. If you, if you, if we play around this, you see, then uh, uh, the law and and justice becomes illegal and unjust, unjust, and becomes a whim of the powerful rather than the right of everybody. So important. <coughs> yeah. So yes. I'm not. I'm not condemning anybody to 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 guilt. And let me tell you something. You are in a very serious. Uh-huh. Position because you are not only an attorney, mm-hmm. you are being trained religiously, so you have to look on my side mm-hmm. and on his side, mm-hmm. and you have to live look on the side in your mind, which mm-hmm. is which is conscience, <laughs> conscience, which is what what we need to cultivate among our our young people particularly. Plenty of us are, are losing the sharpness of our conscience. Yes. So, no, 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 no. Some of you know how known. Well, uh, that's I, a, I, I, I can't say in the ear uh-huh. what somebody magic could say near me thought. Yeah. You, you know yeah, what I, I know. I know very well. <laughs> but, 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 but if if we do not cultivate conscience. Yes. And 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 give it content and give it strength and meaning, then then we we are a bunch of of animals. Yeah, but when you pred- a, predating against each other. There's another word <coughs> for conscience. What you know? is it? I mean, if I am. A part of my country. Right. And I see what is happening. It's not conscience make me defend it. It's, 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 conscience is what? Con- oh, you get it. Uh, uh, it's a description of what part uh, of your... Conscience, conscience is, is a faculty of the soul that tells you the difference between right and wrong. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. And uh, we have... And, and, uh, let me use the word. Go ahead. Go ahead with conscience. And we have to teach it. We, we have to we ha- we have to inform it, and and the, the the problem with us now is that we think that 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 this is not necessarily the, the a primary task that we have to carry out, and therefore it is o- conscience the distinction between right and wrong is now very often lowered to believe that what suit me is what is right, and what not suit me is what is wrong, and therefore I can do whatever I have to do. For, for, for advance myself and to dig you down. And you think what is right is what make you get wet and, oh, yes. you, and that promotes you. Absolutely. And what, what, what present your position. Sure. Even if you think, even if others think it's wrong. And Mr. Charles. My position is correct. Right. And that, Mr. Charles, is one of the reasons why people don't trust us politicians because they feel that we have, in fact, distorted our conscience. And we make wrong right. I like to defend the politicians. I would too. Not, I would like to defend the people that you just say. Uh-huh. It's not all people don't trust politicians. No, but plenty don't. Yeah, but some don't trust pastors neither. I, but that wouldn't make any difference to the to the, the mistrust of politicians. So, <laughs> I, you're perfect. You're you're per, you're perfectly right. You see. Yes. You see, but, but then that raises the. I don't know why they gave you this road, Scully. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's coming out every day. But what I ask you, sir, is yeah. that. Let us concentrate and, and, and attract our audience, uncomfortably perhaps, with the fact that the levels of trust in the society yes, are weak. Yes. Are weak. And running the reason for that is quite simple. Uh-huh. May they trust you, mm-hmm. but what I trust you that you would do, you mm-hmm. have not done it. Yes. 
I believe you when you say you're going to do it. Right. I believe when you say you're going to behave yourself. Yeah. You have not behaved. So, sir. And so, therefore, I can't trust you when you say you're going to do no, it again. But then, but Hold then, on. You say you're a pastor. Uh -huh. And you are sent by yeah. God. Yeah. And you are delivering, helping to deliver me. Yeah. And look what you do. Yeah. I can't trust Mr. Tweet now, yeah. which is wrong. Because Mr. Tweet is different from Mr. Uh, Mr. 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 X. Yeah. I can't trust this politician because two politicians are thief. Mm -hmm. So all politicians so, are thief. So we have to make, we, th this is where sensitivity comes into it. We have to distinguish between the, 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 the individual and the collective. Yes. We don't, we tend not to do that. Yeah. Yes. We find uh, a, there's one person who steps out of line. Yeah. You're facing it in the Jamaica Labour Party right now. Right. Because there have been there there have been instances, I don't wish to call names, of persons who are perceived yes. to have done wrong. Yes. And and the, and it's shown on the, the whole argument party. is a wool on a thief. Yeah, exactly. Yes? And exactly. it would, that, and who who putting that argument from the PNP, it could fl fly right back to them. Yes. Yes, real or imagined. So where where do we where do we where, where are we so sensitive to each other? Where do we so respect each other? Not to tolerate wrong. But rather to be distinguished, to distinguish between an allegation and a proven conviction. Where do we make a distinction? Where even when a person has done wrong, we allow for some kind of remediation. Right, that, 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 that's in the society, you know. There are a lot of us in the society who have looked at certain things that have been done by others, mm -hmm. and we can say, look, mm -hmm. they made a mistake. Yes. Or even if they didn't make a mistake, yeah. they have paid the price for making that mistake. Yes. And now they have, have indicated to yes. us they are changed, they're not going to do it, and we can uh, work with Could them. I give an example yeah. that strikes me? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, former Minister of Agriculture, Floyd Green, yes. made a mistake. Yes. Yes. Um, he, he apologized for it, I believe, sincerely. Yes. And he removed himself or was removed from cabinet. Yes. Doesn't matter which way it went. And he he he, he spent a short while yes. in the wilderness. Yes. Okay. And he has been restored to a different cabinet post now. Yes. As far as I'm concerned, that's perfectly legitimate. Yes. What has what, what, what causes the problem is not that process. Yes? But the fact that it, it, the justification for not charging him involve a whole leap of, of circumlocution and a whole leap of casuistry that, you, that, that has made the situation uh, and, worse. Uh, that those words were, are legal words, right? Yes, sir. Because he's a law, the lawyers, uh, well, well, I'm not sure. Well, indeed. <laughs> um, and and that, has, that, that, that has taken the, the issue beyond all, all, all credibility and made the situation worse for him. But could I say something? I was one of the first persons yeah. who, after listening to him, his presentation, yeah. made a suggestion uh -huh. that the Prime Minister could have discussed the matter publicly mm -hmm. and warned him. Mm -hmm. Okay? What has happened is this. I was attacked mm -hmm. that the Prime Minister has removed this man and you're trying to make the Prime Minister look bad. Well, you see, that, that, but that is waste <laughs> argument. Yeah, but you, those, are, those are things that make up the argument. In other words, my mother said, big stone and little stone build wall. <laughs> 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 I would have liked to have met your mother and father, you know, because <laughs> they had some statements and some folk yes. wisdom there that is out of this world. Yeah. But <clears throat> I say, Ronnie, mm -hmm. there are some of us mm -hmm. who do things deliberately. Uh -huh. man jo uh, listen to this one. Just before we break, go ahead, tell me this one. It's man of a contour. You know, mm -hmm. it's a contour. Yes, sir, I know what a contour You know what right. it is? Oh, Lord. And two men stand up talking, and uh -huh. they say, you see, the, watch a man come down. Watch me and him now. Yeah. As he come, he goes, step on him too, you can have a contour. Oh. And the man come up and stand with him, step on him and say, oh, my Lord, sorry, sir. Oh, wow. Yeah. How could that? That's hypocrisy. And the man in pain, you know. Yeah. And the, the other man laugh. Yeah. No, there are so many of us yeah. who know uh -huh. the wrong things yeah. and do it yeah. as if we're doing something right. Well, that's it. And we hurt ourselves yeah. hurt our family and hurt, and hurt society. our society sure and others who are looking on uh -huh. say but if them can do it and get to it sure so so whatever so. and and this illegality comes now <coughs> say 
Some can't get there and some can't. So that is why we have to repent and be baptized. Because we have to, <laughs> we, 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 need a, we need a moral re- 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 renaissance, re- re- moral rearmament. That's what Sir Howard Cook, God rest him. That's what Sir Patrick Allen, I believe, in a different way is proposing. And that is what, uh, the absence of that is what unfortunately reduces the levels of trust in the society and makes us become selfish individuals rather than evangelists of the common good. When we come back... No, no I'm, not going to, I'm not going to say a word. <laughs> no. I, would, I think that is a very good statement <laughs> yes. on which yes. to finish <laughs> yes, this, this discussion. And it. to welcome, when we come back, Dr. Ransford Davidson, author, researcher, Governor General Achievement Awardee in 2015, and now Business Relationship and Sales Manager at the Jamaica National Bank. A distinguished Jamaican, let him tell us about leadership strategies to reduce employees' occupational stress. That's something the trade unionists will want to hear. Super. The early rise on the Bridge 99 FM. The Honorable Colonel Charles joins me for a robust discussion on the affairs of the nation, reaching out to the diaspora, the Jamaicans all over the world, bringing them back home, sharing with them the challenges and the opportunities of this wonderful nation. Dr. Ransford Davidson, good morning and welcome. Honorable Ben Twain. Good morning. Thank <laughs> you for having me. What a pleasure. Nice to be here. Good. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Honorable President Charles. My uh, best friends uh, who I have uh, never met in person, but I'm delighted to see you both. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, sir. Like I was just boasting out to tell you, you inspire me. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's on the way around. <laughs> oh, yes? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Ransford Davidson, author, researcher, Governor General Achievement Awardee for 2015, and now uh, a d- d- doctor, uh, having done his research in business relationships and uh, leadership strategies to reduce employees' occupational stress. Now, Dr. Randolph Davidson, when Ransford Davidson, when when we were talking about you earlier, I said that your topic is 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 interesting, particularly to our trade unionists like Pernell Charles, how on yes. earth do we reduce occupational stress? Many of us now are being asked to go back to work and we, we're grumbling, Dr. Davidson, we don't want to do it because we have to go back into the rigidity of the office or the classroom when it was different at home. How can we reduce stress? Why, why, why indeed should we even try? Tell us. Right, right. Indeed. So thanks again for, for having me. And, uh, you know, occupational stress is now even more pronounced as we approach, you know, the post-pandemic period. And, you know, employees' organizations are exposed to so many factors. Um, We have seen paradigmatic shifts in the work environment. We have seen changes to digital transformation. We have seen persons losing jobs. We Mm -hmm. have seen persons being transferred to different positions. And so occupational stress is now a real factor. When we think about occupational stress, what we're really talking about is the, really the harmful physical and psychological state that results from the um, imbalance between the job demands of the job and the job resources. Yes. Um, and how that associates with the capabilities or the needs of employees. So you find that workers are affected when resources are limited and their ability to cope with the demands of the work environment is is indeed is indeed challenging so it was it was actually on that basis uh, that influenced my observation Mm -hmm. to take on this particular era occupational stress in terms of its significance and its impact on employee yes um and in fact it is so pronounced a study conducted for example by the health and safety executive Mm -hmm. A regulatory body responsible for promoting the cause of of of, of health mm-hmm. offers empirical support that occupational stress contributes significantly to productivity losses. Occupational uh, stress contributes yes. to productivity losses. Pernell, right. is, is that your experience, sir? I can I can I can tell you that that's a fact. I, in <coughs> fact, I will tell you. I don't know if the doctor has discovered this. <clears throat> there are some workers who have never met the manager. In other words, there are some managers uh-huh. who makes it a 15 or 20 minutes weekly mm-hmm. presentation to all workers. Mm-hmm. Bring them up to date, what, how the factory is going, what we need to do. 
down the line, what's going to happen at Christmas, and the people are happy going to work. There are some people who, the, the man there is peeping to see who come late, peeping to see who for face to cut, peeping to see this, and the stress is from the yard to the picnic gun are left by themselves. To the minimum to the, wage. To the, mini, to, to the, to the basis, mm-hmm. to the little bit above minimum wage. It's factory give a little bit above minimum. Yeah. So <laughs> what, what, what are the strategies in that kind of context, Dr. Davidson? Well, so, so in that type of context, uh, you know, an antecedent of stress is leadership and management support. And so the, the relationship between management and their employees, yes. how management treat their employees, yes. is also a critical part. Yes. of that process. You know, sometimes when we examine even the very leadership style that is exhibited in organizations, it's not conducive to employee motivation, to employee health. Um, you know, you talk about leadership style like, you know, leadership support, transformational leadership, um, whereby a leader seeks to motivate and stimulate and inspire employees in a way where they feel like they're a part of a process, they feel respected, they feel like they are being treated equitably. And so those are really some of the ways that organizational leadership should employ to ensure that the, the, the issue of stress is reduced in the work environment. How you treat your employees? Um, uh, do you empathize? Um, you know, do you ask simple questions? How are you doing? How is your family? Some of those conversations that takes away from the rigidity of the work environment and allows for a more comfortable relationship and relating between management and, and employees. So management support is really a critical part of that process to reduce the issue of occupational stress. Doctor, when, it, yes. Doctor, I don't know if you could manage this one, where a manager told me that he allows the workers to select the three best workers for a prize. The workers look at Ronnie Tate and say, boy, we're going to recommend you because. And the incentive is coming from themselves and the work demonstrates. That, that's themselves. interesting. I've never heard of that. The, the workers yes, say, yes. the management say, listen, we are giving prize to the five best, best workers. workers. That's a huge Yeah, well, yeah. Ronnie, uh-huh. that's what you go to school for. Yes. The, the, the incentive right. thing that makes people happy. But, 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 then, but then hold on now, Dr. Davidson, Bernard Charles, tell me now. In, 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 the, in, in, in a capitalist system, and in a hierarchical system, um, managers are, are, are to, 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 to force profits and to, uh, to effect efficiencies. All you're telling, um, telling me about is nice and soft and sympathetic, etc. But um, I, I, do managers, do, le- do leaders in companies have time to do that? Do people do that at JN where Dr. Ransford Davidson is, is engaged right now? Tell me. Yes, indeed. In fact, it's an environment that we encourage at, uh-huh. at Jamaica National. Right. Uh, that, that sort of an openness to, to leadership, yeah. um, but also ensuring that the required training uh, is in place to expose developing leaders and developed leaders with respect to the styles of leadership that endures to that sort of environment that's conducive um, to employee well-being and and health um, and to depose of stress um, in any way possible. So it is critically important that the, for example, the culture of the organization um, reflect that sort of a leadership style that respects the employees. It is also critically important that the processes and system also support that cause and that process so that at the end of the day, employees feel more motivated. Yeah. And uh, you know, when you feel more motivated, it's oftentimes also a stress reliever. Okay, um, because so you feel respected in it. So no more busher and no more backramasa. This is this is countercultural given Jamaica's yeah, yeah, history, but, is it yeah, not? But, yeah, but running. Yeah. The butcher of the past uh-huh. was one who looking for see who to kill. The butcher, the president. B- busher. The busher. Uh huh. Is saying, the boss said that one of us is going to become supervisor. Yeah. And. The recommendation of who is to be supervisor uh-huh. have to come from the workers. Oh, 
and not somebody who play along, uh -huh. not somebody who's soft, uh -huh. but somebody who is respected yeah. by all of them. And they recommend so that, you know, he comes to work early, he stays late, <laughs> yeah. he's, in, he's nice to all of us, yeah. he assists us, yeah. he's probably one of the better workers. And somebody who is not performing, they take them and talk to them. Yeah. They don't send them home yeah. and... You know, but I'm but I'm asking now. The, 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 wh what you are proposing, Doctor Ransford Davidson, and being yes. supported by, by by veteran trade unionist Charles, is countercultural because the the, the his, our history of stratification, our our, uh, our our background where we distinguish people on the basis of color and class and all kinds of other things. Um, th this 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 is something quite different. This demands a change of heart. Um, a change of mood, a change of mentality among leadership as well as workers, am I right? But Rene, that oh. is what has happened. We have changed that. <clears throat> that is why, you know, and I'm a senior trade unionist, have you ever heard of that? Yeah. That I reach a senior trade union. You, you, but why? On the basis that things have changed. Those that you have just said uh -huh. was the bush, butcher, yeah, bush but, and but mass, this, this is horse, where man riding horse. Yes. Uh, you ever heard about that? The, the white man come off of the horse yes. and put up a black man, and the black man beat you harder. Yes, sir. Those days gone. I hope so. Went away. I wonder yes. what you think, Dr. <laughs> Davis. <laughs> so, so that, 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 that's a great point out of a friend there, Charles. <laughs> so we, we, we are transitioning. Uh, we, we aren't perfect. We are getting there with respect to a change in the cultural climate and how we treat employees and what is really required in the 21st um, century. In fact, uh, from my research, one of the, find the findings really revealed four emergent strategies that accentuated the direct effect of, of, of reducing stress. And one of those looked at, for example, organizational protection, where organization will examine and evaluate those risks associated with stress and also explore transformational leader behavior and for example employee work engagement how you engage with employees within the context of reducing occupational stress another emerging strategy that came out is a supportive organization strategy which focus on employee development employee reward and recognition, as Honorable Prenner Charles uh, alluded to, yeah. um, you're talking about employment feedback and yeah. also, you know, social support. So it has to be a well-rounded system to allow for that process of transition and growth to get to that sort of organizational culture that that we we want in order to effectively reduce the, the extra stress. So it has to be a comprehensive approach. Doctor, let me ask you. Areas. Doctor, let me ask you, in your study, have you looked at the, did you look at the family of these workers? Did you look Absolutely. at did you look at who them leave at them yard with the baby that they right. had to run, come and work and leave the baby by themselves? Did you look at the person who them leave the baby with is, is somebody who went walk off, leave them, or gone a road, leave them and drop in at the tank, or they mash up them face? And <laughs> did you look at the family? Because right. it is so important to make a worker comfortable at work because uh -huh. you know that somebody that is left at home with that child is offering them the motherly fatherly situation you so you do much much work if you have to be thinking what's going on you have to look around wait you're going to hear a telephone you're in a trouble yeah but then you see i agree with that i want to hear dr davidson but i i want to extend it because if i am being paid a wage that can come that i have to be worrying not only about the child at home but whether i can buy dinner tonight for that child Yes, you, you, you're asking me to, to be nice and to be productive and to be congenial yeah, yes, in a situation of fundamental injustice. Okay, so now here, you know, man, $15,000 a day for, for that work, a week for that worker, right? right? And you say I must pay the worker that she leave at her yard with a picnic, mm -hmm. right? 10000 out of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, no, you're back to that same argument. I take your point, but at the same time, it, do, it doesn't improve the stress the stress level at the workplace. Say, say, save us, Dr. Ransford Davis. <laughs> so, 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 and that's a great point again. But organizations also have to get creative 
Uh-huh. And, and so another emerging strategy that, uh, strategy that came out was the matter of work-life balance. Work, so now work this, life this, balance. Work-life balance, right. Okay. Now this deals with the issue of a family. And uh-huh. all those things that our parental child yeah. um, alluded to. Right. Um, how the employee manage the competing demands yes. and the balances that exist in the work domain and the external environment. So, so there is that the need for that sort of a required balance and organizations need to support that to ensure that workers also focus on family, spend time with their family, um, getting persons off the job quickly, reducing over time, and so on and so okay. forth. So persons have a chance to spend meaningful time with their kids, with their parents, with their wives, with their husbands. And so you find that that is also a factor that, that assists with reducing the deleterious effect. Of, of occupational sex. So that's a great point too from the Hanover Pernell chart. Yeah. And so work-life balance. Balance. Is, is, I wouldn't have thought of it. That's important. So tell me now, how, first of all, give us a little history about yourself. How you got into this field, sir? And, and how do we culture the kind of ethic, the kind of behavior model that you are proposing uh, that in, uh, as a broad motif for, for, for the society? Right, right. So, 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 you know, I, the, I decided to, to take on this particular research, uh-huh. um, which was influenced by my observation on the significance and impact of stress, on, not just on, the, on, on employees physically, but also from the psychological and the psychosocial side. Yeah. And, and particularly as that correlates with the job-related aspect of the work environment. And, and antecedents of stress, such as work pressure, workload, management, and management support. So it was my observation of those challenges that exist in the work environment that led me to focus on this particular issue, this particular problem, and to see strategies that could be utilized to reduce the, the deleterious effect on, on employees. Um, so it was against that background that I took on um, this piece of work, and it, it had to be comprehensive. Um, I looked at over in excess of 200 um, journals, really? which included peer-reviewed journals, government reports, government papers, articles, yes. just to have an, an understanding from a scholarly perspective and those who would have contributed to the field yes. on their thoughts and occupational stress and the methodologies that should be used to, to reduce the occupational stress phenomena. How, how, do so, you, how do you measure occupational stress, so Dr. Davidson? Because if you're going to mitigate it, you have to measure it. Right, right, in, indeed. And, 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 but what I'm thinking of as you speak, Pernal. Uh, production, look, production. Well, this is it, because the, the arc of, of national productivity in Jamaica has been going down every year since independence. And stress has been and increasing. And stress has been, uh, has been increasing. Right. So I'm looking, I, I understand what Dr. Davis is saying about a, 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 a company's uh, position and reaction. Uh, you can multiply that. But w- 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 in the few minutes we have left, Dr. Davis, and tell us, how, how do we... How, how do we adapt these lessons, these principles, to, to a national scene? Right. So, so it, it has to now come to the forefront of conversation. Ah. And, and one of the things I recognize that we have really lacked mm-hmm. is, is the data yeah. on occupational stress. So yeah. the data is sparse. Not much research has been done from you know, even a Jamaican context right. on, on the, the issue of stress and, and also how it links to, to mental health problems. In fact, the local Ministry of Health and Wellness figures mm-hmm. show that the country lost over 85, 859 million in 2013 and 2014 wow. because of the absence of employees from work mm-hmm. as a result of mental health issues. So as a result of that data, really? the ministry was able to use applicable strategies um, to, to sort of how do they deal with you now mental health problems. So the data is going to be critical uh, putting ourselves in a position to, to assess mm-hmm. the population, assess employees, and informing ourselves via that data to apply the relevant strategies. That's necessary. But I recognize that the data is really sparse from our perspective on the phenomena of occupational stress, and more work is required in that particular area to measure and to look at the numbers 
and to and to use those strategies, the emerging strategies to assist in reducing. Yes. The, the da, 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 doctor, over the few period, the, the short period, small companies yes. have come on. Five and six young ladies mm -hmm. of similar intelligence yes. get together and form a company. And they are more successful than one person who got a money, put a company together, yes. put out the adverts and they need some workers. Mm -hmm. Some people come and them take them, no know them. Mm -hmm. They don't have a meeting with them. Okay. And uh, and get them So this is hu this is this is more humane behavior. This is more considerateness. These are good virtues, aren't they, Dr. Davidson? Because Ronnie these Absolutely. behaviors increase production. What, but yeah, but and increase in production increase wages. Uh huh. So, and increase wages, <laughs> increase the whole development of your country. So, so why can't we make this a national motif instead of setting our teeth on edge and, and cussing one another and, 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 and claiming preference over this person bigger than that one or higher than this or, or prettier than the other? Why we don't, how, how do we teach people to, to, to live ways in which when they have power, when they have, as, when they have aspirations or reality of leadership they, they they their their emphasis is to reduce stress and so to emphasize productivity dr davis right, you right. into something big you know right dr yes, davis yes, dr yes, davis yes. dr davis for your answer let me hit him with one you choose somebody running uh -huh. at the workplace uh -huh. who don't have a whip yeah licking the workers yeah who have who have a mentality <clears throat> of understanding, yes. of training, yes. of encouragement, yes. so that the worker are happy to mm -hmm. come see Miss Birdie. Yes. They know, say, me have to go back to that again. Yes. They say, oh boy, I'm going back to work tomorrow and show she have something new for us. Yes. So you see the small things where uh -huh. three and four and five trained women I, I'm sure can that, sit down. I'm sure that Miss Birdie goes to church. I'm sure she. <laughs> no, no, seriously. I'm no. sure she has. She has a, a re reasonably happy family life. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And well, she I, and, I, I, and I, she, I, I, she 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 meet she meet a reverend gentleman at church <laughs> who, who who talk to her <laughs> and pray with her and, don't and encourage her only to threaten go hellfire. Doctor Davison, this is right. the, this is a national has to be a national crusade almost to change the attitude of leadership so as to reduce stress and advance productivity. Right. Indeed, and it is it is initiatives like these, mm -hmm. these sort of a conversation mm -hmm. that will really assist the yeah. the process. Um, you know, just just pulling on what the honorable premier Charles said just now, it mm -hmm. also drew my attention to also the impact of a reduction of, in occupational stress on social change. Yes. Right. So so by investing in occupational stress uh, prevention, socio demographic factors also improve, mm -hmm. and the burden of healthcare costs to employees, their families, communities, and organizations reduce. And it means when we have a healthier country, mm -hmm. persons are able to co contribute more to communities and to social change and to investments in social provisioning. Yeah. So you know we really have to look at it from that perspective. So these are not well. optional extras, no. These are, these form form a new core part of management of of leadership in any endeavor, social, Absolutely. commercial, whatever it is. But let let me ask you, don't we have it's a social transformation, Ronnie? Yes. Yeah. It's a development yes. Got you. at the workplace yeah. that was never there. It's moving from the whip. Yes. Yes. Right. And the cursing yeah. to the loving, you know, yeah. it's moving from the pernil child uh, to the runny tweet. No, go away. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, is, is, gentlemen, help me now. Help our listeners. Isn't there legislation pending in Jamaica now for occupational safety? And w w is, if this is so, as I recall it is, um, isn't, is, doesn't this inure towards people feeling they have a better environment, not just, not just congenial leadership, but a better environment of work? And is it really practical? What do you uh, think, Dr. Davis? And don't leave us safety. Yeah, safety. Right, too. right, right. It, it, it does. In fact, I, I really like the initiative that was taken on by the government uh -huh. um, with respect to occupational health yeah. and safety. That. Because oftentimes, for example, you know, just the very ergonomics in the work environment, mm -hmm. uh, we oftentimes don't recognize mm -hmm. the impact that that has also on employee health. Yeah. Um, you know, how you design your office space, yeah. the resources available to the employees, yeah. um, the, the chair that's available to the employee, it's hurting the employee back. Yeah. And so it's not suitable yeah. for the work environment. So I'm, I'm happy that the government also took on that initiative 
Mm -hmm. Because that in itself will help in the fight against occupational stress in but terms of healing. I've, I've, fought, of I've fought for that. Yes. Really, because I still go on the construction site uh -huh. to see the young man in a puss boot. Yeah. And and I want to cap on him head yeah. rather than the it real helmet, shoes, helmet and the shoes and a real head. The boots. Helmet. But but then that, I mean him drop now uh -huh. in bar lots and one insurance. Yeah. Well, no, the, the 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 what I know is that that piece of occupational safety legislation now coming to the fore has been in gestation for about twenty twenty five years. Ever since I, I went to Parliament, it was pending, yeah. and it is, it is just now coming, yeah. which is good. But it, it indicates, Dr. Davidson, that w we, there are some things that we should be bringing to the fore um, normatively b b rather than, than only when we're in trouble or after a long period of time. This is a new culture that you're really putting forward, eh? Right. I, I agree. We, we, what it is saying is that we have to become more proactive. Yeah, man. In the 21st century, yeah. you know, in this fourth industrial age, yeah. and so rather than being reactive, yeah. we really have to be proactive. So um, in terms of looking at some of these processes, let me ask you the last question. No. Granny, it has to be a part of the culture. Yes, but it was never a part of the modern culture. That <clears throat> the, because the leaders of the past were whippers, yes. whip him. Yes, the modern one is to <clears throat> encourage and work with. Yes. To the development yes. of the person that increase production. Paul, doctor, you have to go right again and I will help you. Thank you, Ranch, for Davidson. I, I, would, I would appreciate yeah, that. Listen to me. We have a reservoir here. That's very deep and deep. Very deep. And it's not softness, it is practicality. It is the way yes. forward. Thank you so much for coming this morning. We're happy to salute you. And we love when we hear progressive elements in Jamaica making a difference to all of us. Thanks again. Appreciate it and thank you both for being an inspiration <laughs> to Jamaicans like myself. Oh, and, and for assisting oh. in reducing occupational stress for we're, we're blushing. Thanks a lot. Dr. Ransford <laughs> Davidson, uh, occupational as a specialist and um, officer at Jamaica National Bank nowadays. Running, and uh, so many last managers sentence. don't understand. Yes. How to improve production. And we're going to talk about that another morning, but we thank you so much for the early rise today. Do join us on the public eye at midday today, where we join with Ara Jam in the tri state area. What a privilege and what a pleasure it is to thank all of those who make the early rise possible and to encourage all our listeners everywhere to stay tuned to the Bridge 99.